Jai Jagannath, Radha Radha. We are uh, reading Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we were uh, chapter 2 uh, last, uh, last time, chapter 2 up to verse 59. So we have here the um, a, a brief uh, description that uh, Krishna is giving about the process of yoga. What is uh, the, the meaning of yoga? So in 58, Krishna was describing the Pratyahara, means withdrawing the senses from the sense objects. Now, the verse 59 goes like that. Um, the embodied soul may keep the sense objects at a distance and reject them, but he can give up a taste for such obje objects when he sees or finds the supreme or something that has a higher or better taste. So, um, the Sanskrit for this is Vishaya Vinivartum Te Niraharasya Dehina Rasavarjan Rasopyasya Parandrishtva Nivartate. This is uh, actually a very famous verse and we should um, focus on this because it's important. Uh, many people think that we should reject our uh, um, habits of sense gratification. This is not very likely because Krishna says, explains here you know, that if someone is just uh, keeping the sense objects at a distance or uh, uh, going away from Vishaya uh, Vinivartante without uh, 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 eating them, without uh, mm, consuming them, Niraharasya. Nirahara means to eat, you know, to consume, Niraharasya. Dehina. Dehina means uh, someone who has uh, a body, material body. So, what is the meaning? Someone who has a material body has a body, senses, and a mind. We cannot completely stop, we cannot stop the body, the senses, and the mind from engaging with the material objects. It's not possible. If we try to do that, by, uh, by force, artificially, you know, artificial renunciation, w our need for engagement will uh, take worse forms. Like, uh, for example, let's make an example with the food. So if uh, you are not eating proper food, healthy, sattvic, uh, uh, you know, sufficient amount, uh, well cooked, uh, in the proper time, in the proper place, etc., we become hungry and our mind starts uh, thinking about food. But because we don't... Uh, uh, have control on our mind, the normal, healthy desire for food becomes distorted into a craving. So we get a craving and generally a craving is not for healthy foods. It's, uh, you know, for uh, uh, foods that are too sweet, uh, so too salty, uh, in, in any case, they are giving addiction. They are giving bad impact on the body and the mind. Especially when we are talking about uh, refined sugar, white sugar, uh, 
which has been uh, deprived of all the the uh, oligo uh, elements. I mean, the the small small quantities of uh, vitamins and minerals. So, what happens is when we crave for very um, you know very sweet uh, uh, preparations made with uh, uh, refined sugar and you know artificial colorings, artificial flavorings, and etc. We are actually creating a problem to our body. So this happens with all forms of sense gratification. So when we don't give a proper sattvic, healthy uh, gratification to our senses and body and mind, our need to engage the senses, to find some pleasure, becomes distorted. And then, for example, we become greedy for power, greedy for possessions, we become cruel, we become sadistic, or we become masochistic. Because sadistic is someone who gets exci excited uh, when uh, giving pain to others. And a masochist is someone who gets uh, excited, like he likes, to get pain on himself. So these are obviously not very healthy, uh, you know, things for, for anyone. So when someone becomes a sadist or a, a, a masochist, we know that something has gone really wrong. So uh, lots of people try to run away from sense gratification. But what they become, you know, you, <laughs> you know, in, in Vrindavan there are lots of monkeys. And uh, one of the definitions used by Rupa Goswami when in uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, I believe, when he speaks about the artificial renunciation, the, the superficial artificial renunciation, uh, he is calling it Markata Vairagya. I believe Margheta is a monkey. So it's a renunciation of the monkeys. The monkeys also go around naked and without possessions like some uh, people who want to, you know, identify as sadhus, but uh, they're, you know, uh, th that's uh, not... Uh, that, that's not a very uh, deep realization because these, uh, these, uh, uh, these market of Iraqis are actually, you know, fighting with each other for, uh, you know, the, the who, which spot is best for begging or there, you know, they get angry, easily angry with people. So, you know, they want to have their own uh, you know, structure, social structure between themselves, political, you know, they get political even, you know, which is very, uh, uh, you know, spectacularly absurd because politics is the last thing that the sannyasi or, or the vairagi should do. In fact, we know from the um, biographies of Krishna Chaitanya that uh, Krishna Chaitanya refused to even meet or see uh, King Pratyaparudra because he clearly said that sannyasis and sadhus should have nothing to do with kings or politicians. And uh, he, Chaitanya accepted to see Pratyaparudra only when uh, Pratyaparudra went to him in very humble dress, ordinary dress, like an ordinary person. And he went alone without any, you know, secretary or pomp or, you know, display of uh, material power. And when he, you know, Pratyaparudra approached him very humbly and just uh, went to massage his feet 
And he, you know, when he started to uh, talk about uh, Radha Krishna, you know, that is not the behavior of a politician. So Chaitanya recognized that Prataparudra didn't want to, uh, you know, present himself as a politician in his relationship with, uh, with him. So he agreed to, to you know, uh, uh, talk to him. So this is uh, the actual situation in uh, uh, the traditional Hindu system. Unfortunately, it has become degraded very much. But, okay, you know, anyway, so the point is, we need to stay at a distance only uh, to avoid, uh, you know, getting um, bombed by a lot of disturbances. But if we are disturbed in our mind, if our mind is still attached to the sense objects, and we just uh, uh, run away from this attachment, we are not going to solve the problem. This is what uh, Krishna is saying. You know, the body soul may keep the sense objects at a distance and reject them. But what is the actual solution? Because we cannot just reject sense gratification. We have to replace it, substitute it. You know, when someone wants to uh, overcome any addiction, it's not sufficient to just sit in, in, you know, on, in one place and not uh, give in to the addiction. We need to find something better, something more satisfying. This is why lots of people, uh, especially in the West, found uh, um, you know, very easy to give up all the bad habits, old habits, simply by chanting the japa. You know, there is this uh, widespread idea that uh, the Western uh, uh, converts to Hinduism, you know, people who converted to Hinduism from uh, uh, Western uh, um, origin were all hippies, you know, <laughs> and the idea, I heard, I heard lots of people say that, and because they were hippies, they were drinking alcohol, you know, which is not the fact, <laughs> because hippies were not drinking alcohol, they were famous for smoky ganja, which is like uh, the uh, bang that Shiva Mahadev drinks. Uh, but at some point uh, in the in the hippie movement, mm, you know, the, the hippie movement was actually a very good movement because he uh, it, it uh, was going against the drinking. The American uh, Anglo-Saxon, but not only Anglo-Saxon, but especially. Uh, white uh, Anglo-Saxon protestant is a famous WASP, W-A-S-P, no? white Anglo-Saxon protestant. They were uh, uh, influenced by the early advertisement and they were drinking a lot. If you see the, the movies in the, uh, you know, that were uh, movies of TV programs that were created in, uh, in the United States or in England in the 1950s, 40s and 50s. Everybody is uh, drinking lots of alcohol and uh, they're smoking a lot of cigarettes. Which was a product of uh, advertisement, uh, consumerism. Now, the hippie movement uh, was very much opposed to this uh, and was preaching very simple living. And uh, in, uh, in, in, in all 
you know, under many aspects, it was started by young, uh, dissatisfied American people, sometimes also British people, young generations. They were very dissatisfied with the lack of uh, uh, spiritual values in, in, their, uh, in their society. So, you know, they, did, they were not happy with the consumerism, they were not happy with uh, the materialism, they were not happy with uh, uh, the, um, you know, enslavement of people, especially the mistreatment, mistreatment of women. And uh, so, uh, and, and even, you know, the, the racial uh, mistreatment, especially in the United States, there was a lot of uh, uh, discrimination against uh, uh, non-white people. So, the, some of these um, young American uh, people went to India uh, after uh, the after reading, for example, the book on uh, the uh, autobiography of a yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, by um, uh, seeing, for example, uh, Vivekananda had established some contacts with the American society. So they went to India and they saw the sadhus. So the sadhus became a very uh, good model for the, these uh, American youths, and so they became completely renounced. And they saw that the sadhus were smoking ganja <laughs> and drinking bang, and that's what, how the hippies were born. In fact, there was uh, one, uh, one very nice uh, sannyasi that I mentioned in my book, Why I Became a Hindu. Uh, this uh, sannyasi was, I think, uh, called, if I remember correctly, Ganesha, Ganeshananda, something. Uh, it, was, it was connected with Ganesh. And he was a friend of uh, Mata Amritananda Mai from Bengal. And uh, he saw these, um, these young Westerner people, you know, just camping around uh, the, the, the ashram of the uh, Amritananda, other ashrams, for example, um, you know, the, the Ramana Maharshi ashram and the Aurobindo ashram. Uh, so he was observing these people and he was shocked to see how sincere they were in spite of their lack of knowledge. So this Ganesha Baba started to associate with them and try, trying to uh, teach them, to help them, to make them understand the philosophy and the theology uh, so that they could understand that the sadhus were not just uh, you know, cool people who didn't care about uh, what kind of dress they were wearing. So, um, you know, this is, this is the, the, the fact. And uh, uh, what happened is that these young people rejected the sense gratification, the gross sense gratification of the um, Western society, the American society in the 50s, after the war, Second World War. So, but because they, um, you know, those who didn't know anything better, they just became, you know, like uh, children. You know, so they were just doing whatever they wanted. You know, like if you get a child and leave the child completely free, they will do these kind of things, you know. Uh, and some of them became more attracted to something better, something higher. Parandrish raso varjam, raso piasya, parandrish varjam. So they actually started to do things seriously in spiritual life, 
and they became very dedicated devotees. Like, for example, um, there were many Western uh, uh, so-called hippies who became uh, disciples of Nim Karoli Baba. Nim Karoli Baba was a great uh, saint and a devotee of, of Sri Ram, and he is compared, he uh, is said to be in the spirit, in the rasa of Hanuman. So, uh, there are still, for example, we have the famous Krishna Das, uh, who is still going around and doing bhajans in India and everywhere. And he made uh, the bhajans very popular at uh, artistic level. So, the, the sentiment of devotion that we can find in the Krishna Das Krishna Das's bhajans and kirtans is actually better than the average uh, Indian, you know, devotional songs that we find commercially. So, <laughs> because Krishna Das is not commercial, he sells a lot of records and, and everything, but he's not commercial. His purpose he is to uh, sell records to make the uh, the bhakti popular, while uh, commercial uh, singers in the, the Bollywood style they're using devotion to sell records, which is you know the opposite. So I think this verse can uh, apply quite uh, well to, to this uh, particular change of uh, uh, culture that actually, in my opinion, was a direct cause of the uh, beginning, the awakening of the Hindu resurgent, uh, resurgence movement. Because another big uh, 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 name in this movement was, of course, uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who was the founder of ISKCON. And uh, he brought uh, his uh, white elephants, his uh, white uh, disciples to India to impress, you know, the Indian people. Because when Prabhupada, before going to the United States to preach, he had tried to preach to the Indian people uh, without any success. He had started the League of Devotees in Jansi and it didn't work at all. But he went uh, to the United States and in the beginning he was trying to, uh, you know, follow the, the system uh, that uh, had been applied by his uh, god brothers and his guru, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati and his envoys in, uh, in the West, who had gone, who had contacted very, uh, you know, highly positioned people, uh, people of great culture, academics, um, scholars, people who were uh, very interested in religion, uh, you know, Christian clubs and everything. And they practically had very little results. In all the years after um, Bhakti Siddhanta started the Gaudiya Math in Calcutta, I think 1912, until the uh, 1970, when uh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami opened his uh, uh, no, 65, 66, I, think. I don't remember exactly which year. So, until actually Prabhupada opened his um, uh, little shop, you know, in, 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 uh, in New York, it, like the, this, uh, the name was Matchless Gifts, and started to go to the park to sing bhajans and attract the hippies at the park. You know, before in this, you know, kind of maybe 50 years or, or, or more, about 50 years, 
the, there was only uh, you know the number of uh, people who had uh, uh, converted who had become engaged in the Gaudiya Math uh, movement in spite of all the preaching abroad you know in the United States England and uh, Britain and Germany and everywhere was uh, you know counted on on maybe two hands but not more but <laughs> when Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada started to preach to the hippies uh, in in a couple of years he got thousands of disciples and very dedicated disciples and the temple started to bloom and open and you know building uh, you know building temples and installing deities and then the money started to come to India you know before Bhaktivedanta Swami went to the West Vrindavan and Mayapur were practically nothing, were just, you know, rice fields. So the, there were, in Vrindavan there were a few, uh, only very, very few temples were actually working, like uh, the two main temples that were actually working at that time were the Radha Ramana and the Radha Damodara. The, they had some puja going on, something happening. All the other temples were practically very quiet, if not abandoned. It's just like in Puri, that's the same thing. You know, in all, all over India, there was no, there was very little interest in Hinduism. Then, uh, you know, the, the money and the people and devotees uh, dedicated devotees started to come to India and uh, preaching they also attracted lots of more uh, and more uh, devotees of Indian origin uh, usually from Hindu backgrounds but also from non-Hindu background and uh, you know that we go and see what happened to you know how uh, Vrindavan and Mayapur developed. Bombay. Bombay, there was nothing in Bombay. Bombay was the door of the of the of India to, towards the, the west and it was um, it was all business and Bollywood, nothing else. When uh, when the western devotees started to come then the, uh, the, the Juhu temple was started and for many years the top leaders, the leaders of the of Iskand were all American people, you know, white people born in the United States. So and this was uh, what happened, they found, uh, so many people found a better taste and uh, they got engaged, you know, they got, uh, uh, not engaged to be married, they, got <laughs> they engaged themselves in the, in the bhakti, in a very practical and uh, dedicated manner. So, uh, I don't know, um, what, what do you think about, uh, about this, uh, this application, this reference, historical reference to this verse? Still, you know. Um, so, in general, um, this is explaining how it is better to uh, choose the path of bhakti, which is described as Rupa Goswami as Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti, Ruchate. Bhakti means engaging one's senses in the service of the uh, Rishikesh, the Lord of the senses. Now, if we do that, we can do that following the instructions of Krishna, Krishna will give in the rest of the book. 
see, see there. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll go on to verse uh, 60. Mm. O son of Kunti, the senses are so troublesome that they can forcibly carry away the mind even of a man who is wise and strives to control them. Uh, so even if you make a big effort to control the mind, but still, you know, if the senses are not proper, ah, <laughs> okay, fell, fell down. Uh, if uh, the senses are not properly uh, engaged in bhakti, it is very difficult to stay uh, focused. This is why Krishna in the 12th chapter when speaking about bhakti, we clearly say that it is very difficult for a dehina, you know, someone, uh, dehi, for, for a dehi, dehina means plural, you know. So very difficult for someone who has a body to focus on nirguna brahman because we need to meditate, we need to focus, you know. So through bhakti, it's um, much more uh, effective. Meditation becomes much more effective. So, uh, you know, if we don't engage our senses and our mind, in the service, in the active service of God, then the so same senses and mind will drag us everywhere. And you know, most people don't even try to control the mind, their mind. They always blame others. They think we sh they should control the minds of other people, <laughs> but they don't control their own minds, which is you know a problem. Then we have verse uh, sixty. One, uh, a person who keeps all the senses properly controlled, regulated, and engaged in a constant consciousness of my, of me, has certainly mastered them and is firmly situated in wisdom. So this is clearly saying that bhakti, in the personal devotional service to God is the best uh, engagement, the best uh, path, the best approach to wisdom. 62. This is also another very famous verse. Uh, by thinking about the objects of the senses, a person associates with them. By association, desire develops, and from unfulfilled desire, anger arises. Jayan vishayam punsam sangaste supajayate sangat sanjayate kama kama tik kamat krodha abhijayate. Okay, so <laughs> the, the, some people don't understand that. Uh, uh, thinking about the objects of the senses, uh, contemplating the objects of the senses, dhyayang, dhyayata, dhyayata, um, does not just mean contemplating in the sense of desiring them, appreciating them, thinking of them in a positive manner. This contemplation is very often done by foolish people in a negative way. And it's just the same. Attraction and repulsion are on the same level, are the two aspects of the same attachment. So, for example, someone who's always, you know, talking ill about women, Someone who uh, despises women, who refuses to speak with women because they're women, not because of any other reason, just because they're women, means, you know, th this person is very strongly identified with the body, 
his own body, the bodies of others, and uh, his desire for sense gratification through the exploitation of the body of others is still big in his mind. So, you know, they think they are being renounced because they hate women, but <laughs> they're not renounced. They're psychopaths. <laughs> And in fact, lots of people become confused because, for example, there was uh, uh, a group of, uh, of people in, in ISKCON specifically, starting from uh, um, uh, Kirtanananda. Kirtanananda and Bhavananda were uh, the, the first who wanted to take sannyas because, yeah, because they, and here he comes, okay, uh, because they wanted to, they, you know, wanted to uh, stress they, did, they were not attracted to women, you know, and Prabhupada didn't understand what they meant, because Prabhupada thought, oh, okay, they're not interested in women, it means that they're not interested in sex. Uh, well, not really. There are lots of people, men, who hate women and they're still obsessed by sex. And we, we know how it went, you know, <laughs> what happened there. And, you know, most of serial killers in the United States, and, and especially in the United States, you know, have been people who had, you know, hatred for women. But that does, didn't make them sannyasis or people were, you know, free from uh, the need or desire or even obsession for sense gratification, you know, lust in, in that kind of gratification. So, you know, thinking about the objects of the senses, either in a positive, like attraction, or negative, as in rejection, it doesn't matter, a person is still associating with them. So a man who always thinks about how bad women are, he is going to take birth again as a woman, you know, as a female. Next birth he will, he's going to be a female. There is no... Uh, <laughs> it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Uh, by association, desire develops. So what is the desire? Desire is to do something with the objects of the senses. Either, you know, exploiting them in one way or exploiting them in another way, for example, killing them. You know, <laughs> and from unfulfilled desire, anger arises. This is why they become violent. So, you know, this is also a very important verse that not many people actually understand. So, what should one do? You know, we should not contemplate the material sense objects, but we should engage our senses in something better, like service to God, you know, contemplate, contemplating the forms of God. So, is the everything clear until now? I think that there was some... Sorry, I got, I got disconnected in, but like exactly. I had to disconnect. Exactly, I saw because... that. Yeah, I saw that there was a technical yeah. problem. Actually, my, my, when you asked something, I, I responded, but I, I guess you were not able to hear that time. No, no, so There were no, some sound no. settings got disturbed. Exactly. I dropped off, I rejoined. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that. saw that, I saw that. I quickly went to check, that's why I went on, <laughs> because, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> we must have some communication gap there, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but the general idea, I think it was recorded, um, but I think you got the idea. Yeah, I'll refer back. Yes, yes, yes. So, I missed only for maybe two, three minutes in between. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, and... so, what do you think about uh, this, uh, this elaboration? You have any, yeah, yeah. anything it's to, it's, uh, it's clear, 
any objection uh, it's clear but uh, yeah like you know the another aspect is yeah. uh like we we have to stop sense gratification at some point like maybe we may not get higher taste still some sort of which are maybe which are uh, adharmic uh, sense gratification those at least we should try to uh, oh, that's stop definitely, right definitely definitely but we should stop. even if you are not getting a higher taste mm-hmm. uh, yeah but you get you must get a higher taste even by for example fi- by the, the the idea that you are a righteous person That's already a gratification. You understand? Which is better <laughs> than actually, you know, uh, a- enjoying uh, bad uh, activities, bad karma. You know, the karma, ugra karma. It's better to feel righteous. You know, you're engaging your senses in thinking about yourself as a good person which is okay you know it's not a bad thing you know it's much better than committing bad actions you know when we say param this one about the param means both spiritual or greater or higher so it must be something better something more important as i was saying in you know in the, in the beginning that lots of people who are actually addicted to heavy drugs you yeah. know or addicted just to smoking you know i remember when i joined the ashram i was smoking a lot and i was very young <laughs> but i could totally drop the habit immediately because i got the japa bala and i got the mantra so when you smoke cigarettes you are engaging your mouth and your hand and it becomes even you know something automatic you don't really uh, you know think about what you're doing but it becomes automatic it's it's a kind of uh comfort that you're getting so you know <laughs> i threw away the cigarettes and i got the japa mal in my hand and instead of uh, you know uh eating the smoke as they say you know it is said in, i i like it uh, because in the uh, indian languages to smoke is actually eating smoke you know you You, you you you're confirming that you know from a dictionary <laughs> point of view drinking is like yeah pina like calling exactly <laughs> it's drinking drinking it. drinking the cigarette you know eating drinking so uh you know instead of eating or drinking uh the cigarettes i was eating and drinking the mahamantra the names of god and that was definitely a higher taste you know it was something more of course that has to be supported by yama ni yama and 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 everything you know especially yama ni yama you need to study you need to uh do some some pachara some puja uh you need to do some uh, uh control you know the body like asana is a control of the body and everything but uh, the taste is there the taste is there so that's how i was able to immediately stop smoking and i was smoking something like uh, 30 cigarettes a day you know because i was really looking for some you know comfort and gratification and happiness and pleasure so it it was never enough <laughs> and that's why the unfulfilled desire you know pushes you in in an angry pursuit of the sense gratification and the more addiction so you consume more and more you look you search for more and more but if you find like krishna says in the previous verse param drishtva nivartate is you know we are able to give up what is inferior again uh, <laughs> 
the thing that we find that is better doesn't need to be completely transcendental as you said you know even uh you know just leaving the bad activities you feel better your health gets better your mind gets more peaceful and happy and you feel better with yourself you know that you're a better person you're behaving better so it is a, a, a better gratification than the one that you were getting before but as krishna will say nobody can survive without action we all have to work we all have to do something because without working without acting without engaging the senses in the sense objects we cannot even survive we cannot even maintain the body body mind and senses need sense gratification this is how you take prasad yeah it's, if you uh if some people are non vegetarian you know how they can give up the the bad habit of eating non veg you know by eating better food that is vegetarian and vegetarian uh specialties are so much better than non veg of course <laughs> we need to know how to cook <laughs> You know, you cannot eat uh, a, a boiled potato and, and, and without salt or anything and think that, oh, this is, a, you know, the better taste, param, you know, <laughs> this is a param, the, the, the better. Now, uh, of course, it has to be, you know, tastier. You know, you have, you have to cook it properly. Yeah, uh, uh, does, does it make sense? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay, we. I think we have another. I can't even hear me. Yeah, we have some technical yeah. difficulties today. It looks like, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So no, say it again because I didn't hear. Yeah. No, I said yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. What, okay. With the, what Simple. The Simple enough. Sense. Okay. So let's go on. Sixty-three. <laughs> And yeah, by contemplating the sense objects, and you know, we develop some passion, some rajas, we want to do something, and then because we are not satisfied, we get angry. So the next verse is explaining anger becomes confusion, and confusion becomes failing memory. Because of the loss of memory, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls from his position. So we have seen plenty of sannyasis go through this. Uh, so, you know, artificial sannyasis. So we have 64. A person who has become free from the attraction and repulsion for the objects of the senses maintains the control of himself in his actions and regulates himself in body, mind, and senses, and he obtains satisfaction of the blessing of the Lord. And here we find uh, two important concepts that I just mentioned. The first is Raga Dvesha. Both attraction and repulsion are attachments are contemplating the sense object. So we have to become free from both, from Raga and Dvesha. And then we have Prasadam Adhigachati. Remember I just said that we uh, accept Prasad because Prasad has a higher taste. This was also the um, title of one of the early uh, books uh, written by Bhaktivedanta Swami. Uh, it was a cookbook, The Higher Taste, if I remember correctly. And in fact, the prasada has a higher taste. If you make the experiment, you know, the, the taste of the food is very much affected, influenced 
by the consciousness of the person who has cooked it, prepared it, and especially it is eating it. You know, you remember the story of Prahlad. You know, Prahlad was the son of uh, Hiranya Kashipu. And uh, Prahlad was a great devotee of Vishnu and uh, Hiranya Kashipu was not. <laughs> so, Hiranya Kashipu couldn't tolerate that his son was a devotee of Vishnu because Hiranya Kashipu considered Vishnu as his enemy. He was trying to kill him, to kill Vishnu, which is not exactly easy. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> because he couldn't kill Vishnu, he was trying to kill Prahlad. And one of the ways that uh, Hiranya Kashipu tried to kill his son was to give him poison, you know, poison food. Then Prahlad, what did Prahlad do? You know, he uh, meditated, you know, he offered this food, this poison food to Vishnu and the food became nectar. We can do that. It's, you know, it's not difficult. Uh, especially I remember in, in the beginning when I was uh, uh, starting my sadhana in this lifetime. So in the ashram we were, uh, you know, we were getting uh, prasad and, uh, you know, you can you could try to make the experiment, <laughs> you know, and the prasad had a completely different taste. It was much better, it was much more satisfying. And that's how lots of people <laughs> become fat, you know, because they, they, they like prasad. And, uh, you know, if we ob obtain the prasad, it's a blessing, the satisfaction from, from God. Uh, that is uh, the, the best uh, sense engagement, sense gratification we can get, because it actually purifies both our body and our mind. So that's a win-win. And 65. This prasadam blessing brings about the destruction of all sufferings, gives satisfaction to the mind, and by it the proper intelligence understanding is quickly established. This is, you know, prasade, prasade, mm. sarva dukhanam, all the sufferings. And this is why one of the main activities of the, you know, preaching of Bhaktivedanta uh, Swami Prabhupada was a Sunday feast, you know, in which uh, uh, the, the temple or preaching center was freely distributing prasad to anyone, free of cost. Why Prabhupada wanted to make, uh, uh, you know, prasadam restaurants, you know. Uh, you now the IRM has been carrying on with the food for life, you know. Because prasadam is such a big part of the, the bhakti process. They go to any temple, they give prasad. What to speak of Jagannath Puri temple? That prasad and ma prasad are the actual <laughs> most important thing, you know, that you can get. And um, uh, it's um, it's actually it's actually working uh, because you can see, you know, the people actually change. And even in the, in the times of Krishna Chaitanya, you go and read the biographies of Krishna Chaitanya, the stories of Krishna Chaitanya and his uh, uh, direct asso associates, they, they had two things, kirtan and prasad. <laughs> prasad in the sense of food, you know. So they were uh, having bhajan, kirtan, chanting the names of God, Krishna, Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha. You know, and that was the main uh, uh, kirtan that uh, was the most important in, in, in Krishna Chaitanya's times. And then after the kirtan, I was sitting down and taking prasad. And that's a happy life. <laughs> because that's the greatest engagement 
of the senses. It's the greatest sense gratification. What do materialistic people do when they go, um, they go out uh, to enjoy? They go to the restaurant and they go to the cinema. Or the, they, they used to go, because when they didn't have the cinema, they went to listen to music, to concerts. You know, to the opera. You know, what is that? Singing and eating. <laughs> you go to any pub in, you know, <laughs> the, the lowest pub in, in Britain, in, in, in England, Ireland, Scotland, you know, the pubs are the pubs. What do people do? There, they drink and eat and sing. This is the greatest sense gratification you can find. You know, this is the same for materialistic people and for spiritualist people. Only materialistic people, you know, they eat bad stuff <laughs> and sing, you know, stupid things. If you can get the higher taste, param, ah, param drishwani vardate, if you can get better things with better uh, food and drink and better songs, uh, there you go. <laughs> there is no problem in, uh, in giving up the, the old uh, bad habits. No problem, because it's so easy. And people are happy. You, you, they don't feel like they're doing some kind of penance, austerity, sacrifice. Oh, I'm suffering so much. No, it's very simple. Yeah. And this is also, we connect with another famous verse of Bhagavad Gita. Susukam kartumavyayam. In order to make the sadhana, uh, you know, constant, permanent, you have to make it happy, susukam. If you don't get happiness, if you don't have pleasure, sense gratification, you're not going to, to, to stick around. Uh, you, you see the point? Yes. <laughs> you know, but here, the prasadam is only, uh, like, you know, it could be other than the food also, right? The of course, in these of course, of course, prasada is a blessing. Whatever has been offered to God, whatever is accepted in the form of blessing from God. So we have, you know, flower garlands, we have, you know, nice perfume, we have nice dresses and everything. We have relationships, you know. If we accept as yeah. prasadam the good relationships that God is sending us, we can enjoy those relationships as prasadam. You know, and uh, so it, it can be, uh, the, the, the meaning of prasad can be applied to a great variety of things. But they're all connected to the meditation on God, to the uh, devotion to God, to, to the um, relationship, the connection with God. At least connection in our mind. To, in order to uh, bake some food, prasadam, you don't need to go through complicated rituals. You know, you don't need an altar and the vigrahas and the bell and the special mantras. And, you know, th those are all useful to keep, the, you know, focus the meditation, but they're not the most important thing. You know, the most important thing is love and devotion. You know, as Krishna says, Patrampus pam palantayam yome bhaktya prayachati. If uh, we make an offering to, to God in, sincerely, we don't need a ritual. Like, you know Adi Shankar and uh, Sudhari Lahari? There is a very famous uh, a very uh, uh, stotra to, to the Mother Goddess, and Adi Shankar said, Let every gesture of mine become a mudra. 
let every morsel of food I eat become the, the, the yagya, offering um, uh, out the oblation into the fire, the sacred fire. And, you know, every time I, every step I, I walk, let it be a parikrama to offer, a, a production uh, to offer you respect. Let every time I lay down to sleep be a dandavad pranam to you. And this is what uh, we say, we find in the Dhamma Mahatmyas. You know, in all the glorifications of all the holy dham, we find exactly this, you know that any food that is eaten in the holy dham is prasad. Every time we lay down to rest is a dandava pranam. Because we are connected, we are there, you know, as, as a pilgrimage, as a living in a holy place, so we are constantly meditating on God. And this is purifying Every activity. That is why Christians say, Yad karoshi, yad asnasi, yad juhosi, dadasi yad. Ah, you know, everything you do, everything you eat, everything you sacrifice, everything you give in charity, you know, do it for me. This is how everything becomes prasad. And this is how we can conquer and, and control and train and elevate our mind, our senses, and our body. This is the real meaning of yoga. Is, is, that, uh, is that clear? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Any, anything else? Yeah, it's, it's good to know. Like I, I heard this first time that if, uh, every time you lay down in dham, it's a dandavat. So <laughs> yes, exactly. Even if I sleep, you are, it's a dandavat. Yes, yes. you are doing that. <laughs> you are doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why when you told me you are going to move to Vrindavan, I was like, wow, whoa, it's nice. You know, that that's uh, that's beautiful. You know. So, yeah, I, I, I was so happy to spend such a long time in the Holy Dham, you know, and uh, uh, you know, I, I am still carrying the Holy Dham in my heart. So, you know, <laughs> even, even uh, you know, if for some reason you have to go away from Vrindavan, which I hope you, you don't, you know, you don't need to, but still you carry the Holy Dham in your heart. Because you, you know, you install the Vigraha of the Holy Dham in, inside your mind. So, yeah, good, good, good. Any other observation on this uh, subject? No. No, I think we can move on. We can go on. If it's we can go. A few verses, actually, but I think... Is it that is uh, 72, 72 verses. I don't know if we can... Okay, we can go maybe a little faster. If so, you have time, otherwise maybe we can next week also we can cover. Uh, no, I think we can, we can try to see if we can go faster. Let's see. 66. Okay. If I make it too long an elaboration, you stop me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 66. A person who is not connected or engaged in yoga cannot have the proper intelligence understanding. A person who is not engaged in yoga cannot get any good results or be able to attain peace. And how can there be happiness without peace? This is a very good point. Mm. 67. A mind that follows the senses becomes subservient to them and takes away the wisdom of that person like the wind sweeps a boat on water. You know, this is why we should have the mind as our servant and not become servants of the mind. 68. Therefore, almighty are the hero. One who practices restraint means control, you know, not, um, not repress, repression or uh, you know, just going away, you know. But restraint in all activities while engaging the senses in the objects of the senses is firmly situated in wisdom. Like we were saying before, 
we cannot stop the senses from engaging in the objects of the senses. It's not going to work. But we have to control, to be um, regulated in all activities and engaging the senses in the objects of the senses. Then, 69. For such a wise, wise person, what is night for all creatures becomes the opportunity for regulated awakening. And the time where the creatures remain awake is night for him. Okay, I think we can stop here because this is a very important verse that has yes. l several layers yes. of meaning. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, someone yeah. asked me about uh, this verse recently. It's around this, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, so I think I think uh, we can uh, we can stop here for today. Uh, okay, so thanks for participation. Radhe Radhe, Thank you.